has arrived and gone, and the sales results are coming in thick and fast. Who are the winners? Who has lost out badly and who is heading for a total wipeout? For all the EV fanatics, can we hold our head up high or hang it low in shame? And you die-hard petrol heads, is it all plain sailing? Are you driving the flash in the pan back into oblivion? Who needs to be worried? It's all here in our Q3 Roundup 2024. I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. So although we are an EV channel, this video, we're going to have a look at the overall picture, which includes EVs, hybrids and ICE vehicles. Who says we're not fair? Well, first off, the starting block is Tesla, as they usually are. And their Q3 results for 2024, which includes production and deliveries, they make very interesting reading indeed. They break them down into um, others, which is 26,128 vehicles. That will include the Model S, the Model X, and now the Cybertruck. The Model 3 and the Model Y, 443,668 produced. That makes a total for the quarter of 469,796 units. What's happening with deliveries? Because if they're lagging far behind, then it means they're not selling. So let's have a look at deliveries. So for the S, the X and the Cybertruck, total of 22,915 delivered. For the Model 3 and the Y, 439,975. Uh, makes a total of 462,890. So that's looking very promising. But what does that mean? Let's have a look at 12 months ago. Well, 12 months ago, the Model S and X, there was, of course, no Cybertruck back then, total of 13,688. This really does make up a very small proportion of their business. Model 3 and Model Y production was 416,800, making a total of 430,488. And deliveries, 15,985 for the Model S and X. Model 3 and the Y, 419,074, making a total of 435,059 delivered. So comparison one against the other, the number of SX and of course Cybertruck sales is now up. Production is up. Model 3 and Model Y sales are up. Production is up. And the overall picture, uh, sales are up and production is up. Who says there's a recession? Who says EVs are failing badly? Well, let's just broaden the picture for a moment. Let's have a look at total EV sales, but this is not for the quarter. This is for the month of September. And we have a record month for EV sales in September 2024, a 25% increase on the overall market. Battery electric vehicles, full electric, not hybrids, accounted for 20.5% of total sales in September and a total of 17.8% of all registrations in the first nine months. The SMMT, the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, estimates that around 18.5% of cars sold this year will be BEVs. Most of you will be aware the government has set a target for BEVs to have a 22% of the market share in 2024. And despite manufacturers spending billions in product and market support, uh, the market weakness is putting environmental ambitions at risk and jeopardising future investment. That's a quote from the Mike Hawkes, the SMMT chief executive. So what it means is, although we've had a bumper month in EVs, it's not enough. The government set a target of 22% by the end of the year. That's for registrations, not for sales, so you can't just um, pre-register all the cars. Uh, but something needs to be done because otherwise the auto manufacturers, the legacy ones, are in trouble. 
And we notice already Ford Motor Company has approached the UK government to ask for support in achieving their target or a fudge to try and not have to achieve it. We've yet to hear the result of that meeting, but let's talk about Ford because they've just released their figures as well. So to put this into context, Tesla produced a total of 469,796 vehicles in the quarter. Ford, the mighty giant Ford, produced 23,509. I think that's round about one shift at Tesla. So Ford year to date has sold a total of 67,689. What's gone wrong with Ford? Well, you need to see some of my previous videos because we've been looking into what is going on with Ford. But a total of 68,000 cars sold in the whole of 2024 is definitely not a place where Ford wants to be. I'm sure they would rather just be producing pure petrol cars, diesel cars, and forget all this battery malarkey and just get on with what they know. But they can't. And I'm sure knowing that they can't, they'd rather be in the same situation that Tesla is, having taken some right decisions a few years ago and thrown themselves into this wholeheartedly. They would love to be up at a figure of well over a million so far this year. They're wavering, flopping about, wandering around in circles in no man's land. General Motors do very little better. There's a bit of a war of words going on at the moment between them. Ford is claiming to be number two EV maker in the whole of America. And General Motors, well, their figures say they're number two, but Ford haven't given up. They are still number two, according to them. So General Motors, ah, pretty dismal again. But they're claiming to have beaten Ford for year to date with a total of 70,450 produced. How the mighty have fallen. The two of them are scrabbling around producing about 15% of the number one. Who would have thought this was the main battle going on apart from one company? So can Ford go back to selling ice cars, their pickup trucks and their big beefy V8 engines? Well, in Q3, total new sales fell by 5% year over year to just 3.88 million vehicles. This reduced the sales gain over the first nine months to just 0.7%. That's according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis today. They have a policy of sky-high prices. No discounts whatsoever. They're going to make sure that when they sell a vehicle, they make a really healthy profit. Unfortunately, all it's doing is preventing sales from happening at all. And in the used vehicle market, dealers responded and they've had to cut prices to boost sales. Well, since mid-2022, used vehicle prices have dropped sharply, but new vehicle prices inched lower, far too slowly, as the automakers tried to protect their record profit market margins. Stellantis in particular, sales plunged 20% in Q3. And of course, it now has a dealer revolt on its hands uh, over the policies of the CEO, Carlos Tavares. What buyers need to get them buying again is massive price cuts. And the automakers will sooner or later have to give up some of their big fat profit margins to get there. Otherwise, they're on the road to failure. Now, new vehicles Looking just at the US in terms of the number of vehicles sold, that's been on a no growth for over two decades. Yeah, decades. We are back where we were in 1986. Our peak ever was in 2006. Just before that was a massive trough. And just before that in 2000, there was another peak. But we're nowhere near back up to levels we hit in 2016, 2000, or even 1986. So who says Ford can just go back to making ice cars, what they used to do in the way they used to do it? It's not going to work. The market is not there. If we look at the UK figures, 20% of all UK sales of new cars are now EVs. 
And that means, in simple terms, 20% of the ice market has now gone. And America was a bit late in coming to EVs, despite having the number one in the world on their, on their shores, making cars, all American cars. They've been very slow taking off and consequently their percentage is growing, but very slowly. On the ice front, according to JD Power, there were massive subsidies, 60% rise year over year. Average incentives per vehicle, according to JD Power in America, have risen 63% year over year, and in September it totaled $3,047 per vehicle. And that's driving some of the retail sales. But once again, the automakers are still clinging to the big fat profit margin. Average transaction price, including all the discounts, fell by just 3% year over year to an average price of $44,467 in September. So we finally see the beginnings of a price crash in the ice world. Let's have a look at some of the totals then. General motor sales down 2.2% year on year. Ice vehicles, including hybrids, fell 4.1% year over year. While their EV sales, as we've already said, jumped 60% 66, 60 year over year. Well, let's have a look at Toyota, who've been doing very well up until recently, and they are now scrapping it out with Tesla to get the best-selling car in America ever of any fuel. Toyota sales, 8% down year on year. And Toyota and Lexus brands combined, total of 542,872 in Q3. Now, Toyota spent year after year after year saying EVs are not the answer. It's hybrids, it's hydrogen, it's petrol, it's this brand new engine. Oh, let's try an EV. No, it's hydrogen again. Uh, but last year, it seemed to get a little bit of direction with the BZ4X. Um, it's only sold 4,000 in Q3, but that was up 45% year on year. So last year, Toyota announced big production plans, one and a half million EVs by 2026, trying to ramp up the market. But no one, no one can ramp up production of EVs from zero to one and a half million units in three years. Not even Toyota. The supply chains just aren't there. So in September, we got the first of the climbbacks. It scaled back that to down to just one million EVs. And even that's not going to be possible. Wait for a series, month after month after month of, well, it's going to be three quarters of a million. Well, it'll be half a million. Well, it'll be a quarter of a million. Well, we'll make 47. Ford has faced enormous challenges producing EVs. It always thought that EVs would be an absolute cinch for them. They would have dedicated, loyal buyers who would pay any price to get an EV made by the big blue circle, Ford. But Tesla has spoiled the market for everyone by getting into mass production and slashing prices month after month after month and chucking out incredibly high numbers of vehicles very profitably. And that's totally trashed Ford's EV strategy. Yeah, it was not a good one in the first place. If you rely on every one of your customers to buy one of your EVs and you need them to buy it at an absolutely inflated market price to make it worth your while, one has to say that's probably not the best business strategy I've seen advertised in recent years. So Ford now is going back to the drawing board and they're going to have to come up with a new EV strategy. It is going to have to focus on lower prices. They are going to have to lower their cost dramatically. And because of the Re Inflation Reduction Act and uh, subsidies available from the US government, they're going to have to get away from China all at the same time. Wow, that really is a challenge. I hope they're up to it because they're not looking very good at the moment. Hyundai, Kia, well, they're both, they're both separate companies, but uh, Kia went bust, Hyundai bought them, and they operate them as separate companies. Anyway, uh, so they're there, they share platforms, they share a lot of, a lot of technology. So it's 
difficult uh, to get the figures actually uh, of EV sales away from the ICE sales uh, because they don't actually split them out. So we can't do that. But EV sales, which included um, everything but the uh, Kona EV, uh, they rose by 8.2% year over year, a total of 25,118 vehicles. Okay. None of the EVs qualify for any federal uh, tax re rebates in the States, uh, unless they're leased. Strange anomaly. Uh, pickup sales down 19%, Chrysler 47%, Jeep 6%, Dodge 43%. On this one, uh, they're number seven over in the States. They're down 2.2% year on year as well. That's Nissan and Infiniti. Total of 212,068. Their EV sales, and they've only got two, they've got the Leaf and they've got the Aria, up 65.7% year to year. That's 10,066 vehicles. Yes, some people will point out in the UK they do have other models, but this is America. And ICE vehicle sales in America, minus 4.4%, a drop down to 202,000 vehicles. And this is just an overall picture. We're looking at anything between 5 and 50% drop on ICE sales this year in America. And America is the home of the big pickup truck with the big petrol and diesel V8s and the big muscle car V8s as well. So if anyone is going to hang on to their legacy market for longer than others, it is definitely going to be America. China has long since abandoned its uh, petrol market and is now, for the first time, likely to be 100% EV sales for the future. Uh, Europe is dithering a bit in the middle. They had the same sort of policy as, uh, as, as America. Uh, keep the prices up. Let's make a killing on every EV so that it doesn't affect our core business, which is the smaller ICE vehicles, uh, and this will be a new market. Unfortunately, what they're finding is their uh, light, uh, ICE market is also falling. Not a good situation all the way around. Anyway, uh, most of the figures aren't in yet, so we've got a lot more to go. So we're going to leave it there for the moment. That's a snapshot. So overall picture, ice sales crashing, end of the world for them. EV sales booming. Good times for them, but nowhere near enough. We're still not going to hit our targets in the UK. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, click the like button. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'm Dave.